Okay, hope everyone's doing well. Thank you to everyone for coming. Posted the uh, text on the side if you want to follow along. So I think we'll just review a little bit from last week. We're talk we talked about last week uh, human history, and that's going to be relevant to what we're talking about tonight. It's really a continuation of that. Meaning, when I say human history, I mean Olam Haza, this world, what's going to happen with Mashiach, Tchias Amesim, the resurrection of the dead, and Olam Haba, the next world, and the world to come. We're discussing, we discussed, and we will be discussing what is this world, what is the next world, and talking a little bit about uh, what the body is and what the soul is, and how they interact uh, with each other. So I just want to do a screen share. I showed this chart last week, but if anyone wasn't here, I just want to show it again. Okay, screen share. Not that. This. Okay, can everyone see this uh, chart? Anyone? Hello? Lay, it's working? Oh, everyone's muted. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's working. Okay, all right, great. You can see it. So I don't have an arrow. But if you see here, so the we are in, the world is going to, the world that we exist is going to be 6,000 years. So we're again in 5778. Five, no, 5780. What are we? 5780? Right. So we're before the year 6000. So sometime before the year 6000, um, Mashiach is going to come. The year 6000, we are where this little star is over here. And before the year 6000, before the end of this world, Mashiach is going to come. And sometime after that is going to be Tchias the resurrection of the dead, where those people who merit... Uh, to be resurrected will come back. Their souls will return to their bodies and they will be uh, resurrected. And um, at that point, when Mashiach comes, we are going to be at the level of Adam before he sinned. We spoke about a few weeks ago that Adam, Adam Harishan, before he ate from the Eitz Hadas, before he ate from the Tree of Knowledge, he existed on a totally different plane of existence where the Eitz Sahara was uh, outside of him. It was an external force. And the world and man was the physicality of man before Adam sinned was what we would call spiritual. We wouldn't have even been able to see Adam before he sinned. So, on some level, we are going to, even though we'll still be in our physical bodies and the world will physically be the same as it is now, we will be on a certain spiritual level that Adam was before he sinned. Uh, regarding also the Yet Sahara, it seems that there won't be a uh, the tuma of the Yet Sahara, the impurity of the Yet Sahara as it existed before. So that is going to happen sometime the year before the year 6000. Now, in the year 6000, the world is going to be destroyed. Now, this isn't like a bad destruction, and we are not going to die again. But it's going to be destroyed, and for a thousand years, it's going to be destroyed. And it's going to be rebuilt into a more spiritual world. Now, why does it take a thousand years to, uh, for the world to be destroyed? That is discussed by the Ramchal in Adi Ramaron, page 190, if you want to look. I tried to look at it. It's uh, very Kabbalistic, and I didn't understand any of it. But if uh, if you want to give it a shot, Adi Ramaron, page 190, why why Hashem decided to do it in, seven, in 1,000 years, as opposed to just destroying the world and recreating it in uh, one moment. And during that time, the Tzadikim and those who merit it will have a spiritual existence, and it talks about some sort of wings that they're going to have. If you have the uh, the Rabbi Naaman edition, he discusses this on page 74 and uh, cites other sources where the Ramchal also discusses this. So after that, after this, after that thousand years, in the year 7000, the beginning of the 8th millennium, that's when it's Olam Haba. That's the world to come. And that's when we get our reward. Those who deserve it, who come back after Tchias Amesim and who merit Olam Haba, like the Mishnah says, Kal Yisrael Yishlehem Chelek Olam Haba. Every Jew has a share in the world to come. That's what we're talking about, right? Obviously, except for certain people, very big sinners, heretics, things like that. Righteous non-Jews also have a portion there. And uh, that's when the ultimate reward comes, and that's going to be after, again, after Mashiach, after Tchias Amesim, after the world is destroyed and uh, recreated. Let me stop the screen share. Anyone have any questions on that? Clear? All good? Okay, great. So let's uh, continue where we were, uh, where we left off, which is uh, in the Rabbi Naaman edition, is page 75. And that is part 1, chapter 3, number 10. So 1, 3, 10, page 75, if you have the awesome Rabbi Naaman edition. Vihine. 
According to this, Zman Hagmol Hamiti, the Hainu Zman Kibul Aschar, Shazachar No Lamala, Umekoma, who Achar Hatchia. According to what we said, the time when we get a true reward, the true compensation, um, when we get rewarded, and the place for that, that is after Tchia Samesim, after the resurrection, but Olam Shi is and the new world which is going to be created. That's like the chart we just saw that's in um, Olam Haba. Now, people, Rabbi Naaman makes this point, and he actually he made this point when he came to Manalapan to speak, that when people say Olam Haba, they think that means after a person dies now, where the neshama goes. Um, that's not what we say when we mean Olam Haba. Olam Haba means the world we're in now, after it gets destroyed and recreated, where we all exist in a different type of existence. The place where people go now when they pass away is called Gan Eden or Olam HaNeshamas, and the Ramchal is going to discuss that shortly. Okay. And there, a man, person will uh, gain enjoyment with his body and his soul. His body will become purified through his neshama, through his soul. And he will be uh, be ready to get that enjoyment, that that pleasure. It's uh, interesting. The Ramchal constantly says that in Olam Haba. We not only our neshamas are going to get rewarded, but our bodies also are going to get rewarded. And we see that the soul, the job of the soul in Olam Haba, is to purify the body. So, in Olam Haba, after Tchias Amesim, meaning when a person dies, his body and his soul get separated. Tchias Amesim, the soul is rejoined with the body, and at that point, the soul will start purifying the body, and the body and soul together will get enjoyment, will get the reward in Olam Haba. And if I'm not clear, by the way, or if you want to ask something, please feel free. I know that everyone's muted, and there's no faces really, but yes. Can, can I? I'm sorry, just Don't a be little sorry. cautious for sure. me. <laughs> no, no. Um, so it's 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 mean that we're going to have the triata meeting, and after that, like how many years then it's going to destroy it. So after the in, in like the, forty years. So in the year six thousand, by the year six thousand, the world's going to be destroyed, and now we're in five seven seven eight. Five, I keep messing it up. Five seven eight zero, something like that. No, no. <laughs> yes, but after the Triata Metim, how many years then going oh, to destroy? It? So like de- forty it, years. So no. So it depends when Triata I mean, it depends when Mashiach comes, when we earn it, when we deserve it. Right? Mashiach only comes when we uh, deserve that Mashiach comes when we get the merit which has not happened yet. Now, um, I didn't mention this on the chart, but you have the... Mashiach could have come from the year 4000 and on, which obviously hasn't happened yet. So Mashiach can come... Mashiach has to come from today before the year 6000. So it, if we merit it, we could have a very, you know, a longer time where we have the uh, times of Mashiach and then Tchias Amesim. And after that, we'll have um, the world being destroyed and recreated. That could be... Um, that all depends on how much merit we have for the sooner that Mashiach comes and Tchias Amesim is going to happen. So it really depends on us. And, and just one more question. And like, when going to destroy it, our body going to destroy it too? Or like, you going, we are going to live in another level of body and soul? Right, so he makes the point that we're not going to die again. After Tchias Amesim, we're not going to die again. But that um, he quotes here, from other places in the Ramchal, that I'll just I'll read the way he translates it in English here. Hashem will make for them wings of eagles, and they will glide over the water. So there's some spiritual existence that's going to take place um, after the world is destroyed. We're not dying. It's not like a bad destruction. It's not like Armageddon or some disaster movie where the world is like blowing up or something. It's uh, the world is going to be recreated in a spiritual level, and the tzaddik will have some sort of spiritual existence uh, at that time. But the body is continue with us, or just the soul? So, oh no, so that the body and soul will be together. He's going to speak about uh, shortly how the um, after Tchias the soul will start purifying the body, and why that doesn't actually happen now. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay, let's uh, let's continue. Okay, but again, the idea is also that it's not just the soul getting rewards, since the body and the soul, right? All of us have a body and a soul. And since 
Olam Haza, the world we're in now, that's where we earn our reward by struggling and fighting the Yitzhahara and doing what's right, even though it's difficult. So our body and our soul participated in that. It worked to get that reward. So it only makes sense that because the body and soul uh, worked for it, that the body and soul both should get that reward. Okay. V'ulam yibachnu sham ha'nashim v'tischalif madrigasim u'malasim. However, you, um, people will be examined in Olam Haba, and they're going to have different levels uh, based on what they did. K'fi hashir ma'ashatarchu ba'olam ha'avoda, according to what they did in the world of avoda. U'k'fi ma'ashahishtatu l'hasig min ha'shlemesh, and according to what they struggled to get to perfection. Ki k'fi shir zet, his dahir ha'nashama ba'atzma. Because according to that level, the soul... That will cause the shining forth of the soul. The tire baguf and the soul will then purify the body. and both of them will get this high level. and it'll be befitting to get close to Hashem. amiti, and they will benefit from His light and get the true good. So you see from here again that in Olam Haba. In, in, in Olam Haba, it's, um, it's not, not all of us are going to be on the same level. Those who struggled more in Olam Haza uh, against the Yetzirah and conquered it will be on a higher level than those who, you know, didn't do. So it's not like you get in or you don't get in, but everyone is going to be on their level according to how much they worked and how many myths they did and whatnot. And again... As we mentioned in the beginning, the whole purpose of this is because God created us to get good and get the ultimate perfection, and the ultimate perfection is Hashem, and the highest level of good that we can get is by being similar to Hashem, and by being similar to Hashem means acquiring perfection for ourselves. So to the level which we acquire that perfection will be the level that will be connected to Hashem, and the level where we will get that benefit in uh, in Olam Haba. So again, it's not just like you get a ticket and you get in and everything's great. Everybody's going to be on a different level according to exactly what they did. So based on exactly what a person earned, that's exactly where he's going to be. Okay. Yud Aleph, page 77. V'amnam. hamisa al adam. Since death was decreed upon man, ukemosh zaharna, like we mentioned. V'nimsa shehamorka vazetzar shepar lizman ma. So that means that the combination of body and soul has to be separated for a uh, for a time, um, right? We said that after Adam sinned, that in or after Adam sinned, evil went into a person. That the Yetzirah, Tuma, Zuama, different type of uh, spiritual impurity became part of a human being, and for that to be rectified, people have to die. Even somebody who never sinned still has to die because of the sin of Adam, and that has to happen. Okay, and that means the body and soul have to be separated for a uh, for a certain amount of time. The achrakach, and after that, yashuv lehischaber, it'll go back together. The body and the soul will return together. Hine gambiz mana peirazeh, right? And when when the body and soul goes back together, that's tchiasamesim. That's the resurrection of the dead, which we mentioned last week, is one of the yud gimel ikrim, one of the thirteen things that every Jew has to believe. Also during the separation, so during this time of separation of the body and soul, the body needs a place for it to be, and the soul needs a place where it should be, each for its purpose. Now he's going to explain what happens to the body after a person dies, and what happens to the soul. The body has to return to its uh, source. V'tiparet harkavasa v'tipasit surasa and lose its um, lose its tsura, its um, com- composition. V'hail v'hayamina offer since the body is from the earth, elav yashiv from the dirt it should go back. V'umasha amr yisbar shemal adam and that's what Hashem said to Adam. Ki offer ata ve'al offer tashiv. You are dust and you will return to dust. So that's where the body goes. The body has to be buried. It's very important that a Jewish person be buried. The soul only needs to look forward to what it's going to do to the body. That when the body is 
still in the earth, meaning after it dies and it's broken down and it's lost, the soul has to go somewhere. And then it will be rebuilt from new. When it goes and uh, enters back into it. Now for that purpose, so again, the soul, when the body and soul separate, the body is going to be in the ground. So the soul has to go somewhere in the meantime. So that place is called Olam Hanashamas. That's where the souls which merit it, which merit go after they leave the body. And they will go back and they go back in a state of rest. When everything happens to the body, that has to happen to the body. So, the again, the body has to uh, die, has to decompose because of the sin of Adam, that evil entered into it. So as a kapara, as a tikkun for the body, it has to like uh, separate from the soul. And the soul, during that time, goes into the Olam Hanashamas, the world of souls, which is Gan Eden. And Gan Eden is a spiritual place. That's where Adam Harishan was before he sinned, which we said the physical part of Adam was on a spiritual level. And that's where the soul uh, enters uh, when a person dies. So when a person, whoever's died from the beginning of creation until now, their neshama is in the Olam Hanashamas. Vihine, Kozmanahu, now, what's going on with these neshamas? What are they doing in the meantime? So, these neshamas are on a high level and getting enjoyment, getting tanuk. Like they will get after at the time of true reward. So, in Olam Haba, there's a certain spiritual reward. Again, Olam Haba is after the world is destroyed and recreated. That's the ultimate pleasure and the ultimate reward. But... When people die now, they're not in Olam Haba, they're in Olam HaNeshamas in Gan Eden, and the reward that those Neshamas are getting now is similar to the reward that, that everyone will get after Tchias Mesim in Olam Haba. Okay. Now one thing he doesn't mention here uh, is Gehenim. Rabbi Neiman points out that Gehenim is going to be spoken about later. And Gehenim is when a person has averes that he needs uh, atonement for them, and uh, that's going to be talked about later on. Okay. And for sure, the level of the neshama in Olam HaNeshamas, in the world of souls, is going to be measured according to a person's deeds. Like it will be measured later. So the level that a person is going to be in Olam Haba is similar, it sounds like, to what it's going to be in Olam HaNeshamas. The true uh, perfection that is destined for those who deserve it. The true reward is only not just for the body, not just for the soul, but it's after the body and soul join together, after Tchiasamesim, and after the world is recreated in Olam Haba, that's where that's where a being gets the true reward with the body and soul going back together. But now those people who have died from the beginning of human history until now, just their neshama is getting hana in uh, in the next in in the olam hanashamas. Uh, but the true reward is when the neshama and the body rejoin together in uh, in olam haba. Okay. Is there any questions, comments, concerns, lack of translation? All good. Okay. Bunch of black boxes. Okay, let's go uh, further. Ve'ulam, Melvad hayos olam hanashamas makom l'nashamas l'shevus bo kozman hayos mitzapos laguf k'mosh zachar. Now he ne od toelus gedol and imtzis bol l'nashamas atzman v'achreim laguf. Besides for the fact that the nishamas are in this olam hanashamas and they're waiting for the body. Meaning, we mentioned so far that the neshama is in this Olam HaNeshamas, waiting to be rejoined with the body. There is another purpose of it being there. Another purpose that the neshama has to do. It's a purpose for the soul itself, and after for the body. That's going to happen during Tchias HaMesim. So something... There's a reason, it sounds like the body and soul have to be separated when a person dies. 
um, for another reason, and the soul is in Olam Hanashamas for that reason. Right? It's very interesting. A person has, you know, hopefully 120 years in this world to earn his reward. That's it. Right? We're talking about thousands of years, right, of the world being destroyed and this and that, and, you know, being in, you think about someone who died in the year, you know, 1200, and, you know, they've been in Olam Hanashamas for 4,000 years or whatever it is, four and a half thousand years. They're getting their reward based on what they did during their, you know, 80 years of life or 70 years of life or whatever it was. So the, and we're getting, we will get our reward in Olam Haba for eternity based on our finite time in this world. So he's saying that really a person deserves what he did to earn his reward, when he dies, it's done. Meaning, you're, you guy, you're finished. A person's dead, he's done. Everything that he's going to do to get his reward is done. Nothing else he can do. Now, at that point, he really merits to get the reward right away. But, he's going to say what happens. Like we mentioned, that a person only gets, is able to acquire perfection in this world, before he dies. Now, what happened from this Xera of Adam Arishan? Every time that, the whole time that the soul is in the body in this world, now, like we mentioned, we all have a body and a soul, but evil is attached to it, and the soul can't be detached totally from it. We are, uh, we, the soul is like stifled and darkened and dimmed. And even though a person, through his good deeds and his mitzvahs, acquires shlemus, it can't be revealed. So a person in this world acquires shlemus through his good deeds, and all that he can do is up to the point that he dies. However, it he can't get the reward well, he's going to say, it's not able to reveal itself. What does that mean? The soul is not able to shine the way it's fitting to do. Meaning a person does mitzvahs and avodas Hashem, his soul gains that ability and that potential to shine. However, since it's in a body, it's limited by a body. The soul in this world is limited by the body and the evil which is combined uh, through the body. Right, it can't shine forth what it really reached. It's all like it's all limited and uh, until the time that it can be revealed. But the limitation is not because of the soul itself, but because of the body, like we mentioned. And the body itself loses out because of this. And it can't get that purification that is befitting to get. So, when a person does mitzvahs in this world and does avodah Hashem, the soul shines forth. However, it's not able to shine forth what it's uh, able to do because the body limits it in the current state. And uh, Rabbi Naaman says it's, uh, he brings a, a parable, a mushal, that it's like a coal, a hot coal, that the fire is like hidden in the coal and there's no flame visible. And you have to like blow on it to get it to, um, to, to get the fire started. So in a way, the neshama, even though the neshama is gaining that potential energy to shine forth and the neshama is getting holier and holier and however it is, it doesn't have the ability to shine forth the way it's fitting to do because of the reality that it's in uh, the physical body now. Let's see, there's some uh, questions here. Oh, someone asked, why Why does the Ramchal say that a person... Oh, I, I, the, I just added that, why a person needs to be buried, but the, the, it sounds like it's just from the verse, because it says your uh, person is uh, earth, and he has to return to earth. But uh, the Ramchal wasn't addressing why a person is uh, buried, as opposed to other other things, but I was just uh, mentioning that as an aside. Um, is the first, someone asks, Olam HaNasham is the first level before Olam Haba, like to pure... Um, so now, Olam Hanashamas is, uh, it's like a separate thing. It's that, um, 
when a person dies in Olam ha a person dies now, meaning people that have died from now, from the beginning of history until now, while the purpose of Olam Manishama is that the Neshama has to go somewhere while the body is in the ground before the body and soul rejoin at uh, at Trias Amesim. So, oh, it, it also sounds like here he's saying that it has the ability, the soul in Olam Manishama has the ability to uh, shine forth more. I think it sounded like he was mentioning that. One second. I have to check into that. I have to see if there is something added to the neshama in Olam HaNeshamas that makes the neshama more uh, radiant, or if that just happens naturally when it's disconnected from the body. I'm not totally clear on that. So, uh, where did you say, someone add another question? Where did you say a soul comes and leaves? Which part of the body? Um, so I don't think I... Someone's asking, I think, specifically where this uh, the soul... Uh, what part of the body the soul leaves. I'm not, I'm not really sure if there's a, a part. It, Rabbi Naaman pointed out earlier that it sounds like a human is a composite of a body and a soul, and it's not just that um, like there's a soul inside of a body. And also, it's hard to s like explain or totally understand because a soul, like we mentioned, is a spiritual thing, and a body is a physical thing. That's why we say in Asher Yatsur, Mafli Lassos, it's a Pella, it's a, it's a wonderment that a human being is a wonderment because we have a soul which is a totally spiritual thing uh, connected to a body which is a totally physical thing and they uh, they join together. Uh, Rabbi Naaman actually says from somewhere that even the lowest part of the soul remains with the body. Uh, the lowest part of the nefesh remains with the body after a person dies. Uh, that's why the the, the loose bone, the bo bone in the back of the head, while the rest of the body may decompose, the bone in the back of the head uh, stays and that's where the person is rebuilt during Tchias Amesim and he says that uh, has to do with the uh, lowest part of the soul being being there and to uh, Leia's question the answer is yes okay. what about reincarnation? Oh. Uh, how, oh, how does that work into all this? yeah it could be um, it sounds like Neshamas could come back you know, into this world to fix up things that they had to fix up if they, you know, they have the opportunity, I guess. Now, I don't, I don't know the details how it works. When a neshama goes to uh, Gehenna, when a neshama gets reincarnated, but it sounds like reincarnation is to fix up certain averas that were done or things like that, or not, or things that have to be fixed up. Again, this is more Kabbalistic stuff, which I don't know about, but it sounds like it, you know, works fine with, um, with, with everything he's saying here would fit in nicely. But, uh, I mean, he's not, he's not, I, th I think he's going to talk about it later, actually, how reincarnation fits in. Because also, there's other things that he didn't speak about, right? Gehenna, we didn't, uh, we didn't talk about. And, um, uh, and other aspects. So he didn't, he didn't uh, totally talk about every aspect of this. Um, someone asked if non-Jews have a loose bone. I assume so, because um, non-Jews can also have a, I mean, I, I assume physically they have a loose bone, because, uh, and also, uh, non-Jews can get Tchias uh, if they uh, merit it, right? Jews, it says, Kol Yisrael uh, we're like automatically there unless we do something to mess it up. And non-Jews can also get a, a get a Chelek in Olam Haba. That's where uh, Judaism differs from uh, other religions because we believe if you, you know, follow, follow the Sheva Mitzvahs, you can, uh, you can get in. Whereas other religions say if you don't believe exactly what they believe, then you go to Gehenna and that's it. But, uh, but here he's saying, it's, it's interesting, he's saying that the neshama uh, can't shine forth the way, it, uh, way, way it's really able until a person dies and the neshama is going to join back with the body. But there was a photographer that told my Roshiva once in Eretz Yisrael that like Gedolim have this like shine to them. And uh, sometimes she can capture it on film and sometimes she can't. And I once took a friend of mine to uh, Revel Yasha for Havdalah. I think I might have mentioned this story once. And when we came out of Havdalah, my friend just looked at me and was like, wow, he was glowing. Like, sometimes you see very holy people, and you can kind of see, like, the neshama, like, you know, there's, some, there's something there. It's, like, not a physical thing. You can't really point out to it. And uh, someone even said, like, uh, uh, a rabbi of mine said, when he sees, like, from kids, he also sees it, you know, just very pure, and the neshama coming out. But um, nevertheless, the Ramchal is saying that the 
neshama, the body, the way it is now, limits the neshama for from shining forth the way it is. So let's just uh, let's just finish this uh, paragraph. We can finish this uh, this os. Amnam gam him afsedes she kvusha ba'atzma ve'eni chol lifashid zarel, and the soul loses out because it can't shine forth the way it should. Its potential. And it can't do what it's supposed to do, which is to purify the body. The job of the soul is to purify the body. Now, like we mentioned, since the the way the body is now and the way the neshama is, the neshama does not have the ability to purify the body. That only happens when a person dies and the soul and the body are separated. Then the soul will return to the body. And then the soul will purify the body, and it will almost make, level after level, keep purifying it until the body itself will almost become physical, and eventually in Olam Haba, the body won't need to eat and drink, but it will have more of a spiritual existence. If the neshama could... Uh, Purify the body right away. It would uh, it would be perfected. One because the job of the soul is to do good to another, which is the body. The soul that it should affect the body. And that's the nature of the soul. The nature of the soul is to just shine forth and purify. That's why it was created. This is interesting. He's saying that the purpose of the soul, the creation of the soul, was to purify and to purify the body. So he's saying that the soul would fulfill its purpose by purifying the body, and that would be Shlemus, because everything is Shalem is complete when it fulfills the purpose for which it was created, and the purpose of the soul is to purify the body. When the body when the soul leaves the body and goes to Olam Anashamas, the world of the souls, or Gan Eden, Hine, Shamis Pashetis, Umis Dahera Bizarra, there it can shine forth freely. It's not limited by anything. According to what it was able to do, according to its um, actions. So, depending, how, depending on a person's actions on Olam Haza, is the way that the Nishama will shine forth in the Olam Hanashamas. And the level which would, it will attain there, it will strengthen from what it was weakened when it was in the body. And it will be um, more prepared for what it has to do at Chiyas Emesim. So it does sound like there is something going on in Olam HaNeshama. Someone asked this, that the Neshama, the soul, is strengthening when it is in Olam HaNeshama. And therefore, when the neshama is returned to the body after Tchiyas Emesim, then it can do its job of purifying the body. So therefore, like we just said, that when the soul returns to the body, it can purify the body in the way that it was created. So, just to summarize, we had the 6,000 years of the world like we have it uh, now. So before the year 6000, Mashiach will come, and then we'll have Tchiyas HaMesim. Tchiyas HaMesim is when the body and soul will rejoin. Now the reason a person has to die is because of the sin of Adam, that evil became a part of man. And as a tikkun for that, as a rectification for that, a person has to die and his body has to go in... A person has to die and his body is in the earth and the soul is in the Olam HaNashamas. And the soul shines greater and greater according to a person's deeds. However, it's always limited when the soul and the body are joined together in this world. When a person dies and the soul goes to the Olam HaNashamas, then it can shine forth and it can prepare for its mission, which is to purify the body, which only happens after Tchiyas HaMesim, after Mashiach comes, when the soul returns to the, uh, to the body. Okay, just uh, another question here. So the body gets purified. Someone asked, how does the body... Oh. Sorry. The, someone asked how the body gets uh, gets purified. Uh, the the way is, is that the soul, which according to a person's deeds has gained whatever holiness, and you know it's the way he says it is uh, Zohar. It's like shining, and when the when the soul rejoins the body after Tchias it purifies the body. It makes it into a more spiritual force because of that. Uh, potential. It's the soul is no longer limited by the body in its 
quote-unquote sinful state the way we are now. So when the body rejoins the soul, that, that purifies the body and makes it into a more spiritual existence. Sorry, someone else have a question? Okay, any other questions? Uh, yep, sorry, yep. <laughs> no, just uh, to, to, to clarify, so the, like the Olama Neshamot, Gan Eden, and Olama Ba, it's like true levels difference for the soul, who just uh, after the Triat Amitim, the soul go to Olam Ba, and after that go to Gan Eden. So the difference is, is, is in Olam Haba, the body and the soul are together. I mean, after Trias Amesim, the soul rejoins the body, purifies the body, and the body and soul together get the Hana, get the uh, reward and the enjoying of the Shlemus in Olam Haba, so it's together. That, that has, Olam Haba, as of now, does not exist. It's only after the world is destroyed and recreated in this spiritual uh, form. And the Olam Hanashamas, that is where just the soul goes now when a person passes away. That. But when some some like uh, someone died and uh, uh, the the parrots doing the kaddish, so like uh, the soul going to more level and level. So because why I understand now, then the the rab say of the Hashem, then in the olam and shamot, like the the soul continue in the same level, or not? So. It's, it sounds a little bit like the way he was just saying that the, the soul benefits from being an Olam HaNashamas. In addition to getting reward, it sounds like there's something going on. Um, I'm not, I'm, I honestly don't know if there's different levels, but there's also something which we didn't talk about that Ramchal is going to talk about later, is Gehenim. Right? A person, you know, we're talking about like best case scenario, I guess, where like someone doesn't have to go to Gehenim and cleanse any of Averis and didn't have to do Tikkunim or whatever. But uh, there is such a thing, so I'm sure Kaddish helps for that, but as far as different levels in Olam HaNashamas, I'm, I'm not sure about that. I don't know. Okay, thank you. No problem. Mm. Oh, so I'm just reading another question. Oh, I think it was a thing. Okay, any other uh, questions, comments, concerns? All right, great. Thanks, uh, thanks for coming. I hope everyone has an easy fast tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Rav. Thank you so much.